okay so hello and welcome back so now the next thing that we discuss here is the roman numerals and basically these no roman numerals essentially as you know are used basically in they would look something like this so this is a 12 for example this is an 11 this is a 10 and so on and so forth so these are used for example in mathematics they are used essentially on the face of clocks they are used on cathedrals and, and, and churches and and in different places essentially they are used essentially in legal context they, they are used in um, they are used in um, different branches of science and so on and so forth so let's take a look at these and see essentially how these numbers are supposed to be written how they work now one thing about the the roman numerals um, is that basically the way that you would write your 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 essentially your numbers based on these numerals the system is not a positional system meaning that um, meaning that for example in the when you write a number using the hindu when you write a number essentially using the Hindu Arabic when you write your number using the Hindu Arabic numeral system that is essentially the numbers that we write today for example 45,654 that is essentially a number that we write today so that this number essentially is first of all essentially the, the 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 numerals that we use are of course part of the hindu arabic numeral system right meaning the numbers can be written as as the the di di digits or the numerals are zero one two three and so on so forth all the way up to nine or it could be something like for example zero uh, one two three four five six now this is in persian language basically six seven eight nine and that is nine essentially all the way up to nine so eight and nine so in persian you would read this as sef yek do se char pan shish half tash no okay or basically you could essentially the numerals that are used in this system are the descendants of the Brahmic or essentially the the numerals that are used in the in India essentially so you would have essentially Devanagari or for example Gujarati or Kanara or Tamil Telugu things like that those are different meaning that um, now this it's, it's just a whole bunch of different families all essentially used in india you already might know about them of course <coughs> now apart from the numerals the num the system itself basically is a positional system meaning that basically you could you could essentially put a four over here and the four is in the ones place value meaning there is a position position zero position one position two position three and position four when the position is zero that means that the value of this position is 10 raised to the power zero because the base of the system is 10 when the position is one that means that the value of this this place value is 10 raised to the power one or 10 this would be essentially 10 raised to the power two this would be 10 raised to the power 3 and this would be 10 raised to the power 4 which means that then for example this 6 over here this actually means 6 times 10 raised to the power 2 which is the same thing as 6 times 100 which means essentially 600 right and so the same goes for all the other digits meaning the 5 means 5 times 10 raised to the power 1 which is 5 times 10 which is a 50 so this is a positional system but then uh, essentially what hap the, 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 essentially what happens with the roman numeral system 
is that in that system basically the, the system is not positional it's an additive system and but of course you have you do have your own essentially you do have your own numerals but then you have to add them together in order to make the different numbers that you want to write down basically so what this means is that for example you have these different numerals for example you have the um, you have essentially the this character that looks like an I and then you have this character looks like a V you have this character looks like it looks like an X L and then you have C and D and M basically so this the integer value of this character is a 1 this is a 5 the X is a 10 the L is a 50 the C is a 100 the D is a 500 and the M is a thousand right and so essentially then then there is there is there is there is these different rules that that you have to follow in order to put these together to make your numbers for example if your number is a is a one you would use for example one of these so that is a one if your number is a two you have to put two of them together meaning one plus one is a two although technically you have to write it like this so this is a one and this is a one so that's a two right normally essentially in practice when people want to write them meaning not in print but but just writing them down you would you would write it a two as essentially this and essentially they put both of them together that becomes a two and then that is essentially one plus one for example when you want to write a three you have to put three of these together that becomes a three but then when you want to write a four you cannot essentially you cannot put more than three of the same characters essentially together one after the other meaning that you can put one of them or two of them or three of them one after the other but then when not more than three essentially meaning that when you write when you want to write a four you cannot write a four like this it used to be essentially in common use but not anymore you just can't do that anymore because people don't do it anymore sometimes you might see essentially old clocks on the face of which you might see a four like this but it's not done anymore meaning that it's not the number is not written this way anymore so in this system you have to add meaning it's an additive system and also you have to subtract meaning that adding this these are this is adding so this is one this is one plus one this is one plus one plus one but then for in the case of four you have to subtract meaning that you have to subtract a one from a five so you write a five and you put the one over here on the left hand side which means that the one is subtracted from the five right so that is a that is a four which means that it's a five minus one then for example a five would simply be this this is a five the same character that we have over here this is a five for a six you have to put a five and then put a one over here and then add them together that's a six which is five plus a one you see that the one comes on the right hand side which means that it's added to the five and then you, in the exact same way you can go for seven so a five and two ones an eight a five and three ones a nine you cannot essentially you see a you can go all the way up to for example an eight which is a five and three ones that's a that's an eight which is five plus one plus one plus one right five plus three is equal to eight but then as as mentioned before you cannot use three of the same characters essentially essentially one after the other which means that not four of them are you able to use are you allowed to use which means that you cannot do this this you cannot do as a nine basically so you have to subtract so you have to take a 10 which is an x and then subtract the one from it meaning the one goes on the 
left hand side so this is essentially a 9 which is essentially a 10 minus a 1 a 10 would be just a 10 11 would be again a 10 and a 1 12 would be a uh, basically a, a 10 a 10 and a two ones three 13 would be a 10 and um, a 10 and um, um, uh, 13 would be a 10 and three ones 14 would be essentially now we will see about that but that's essentially how the system works okay and Again, as you can see, the system is not a is not is is of course not a position system. It's a um, it's 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 well. I mean, it's just the way that it works, really, right? <coughs> so now about Roman numerals. So Roman numerals are a numeral system that originated in, in ancient Rome and re remained the usual way of writing numbers throughout Europe well into the late Middle Ages. Numbers are written with combinations of letters from the Latin alphabet, meaning that the numerals are, the, are letters from the Latin alphabet. These are, well, just exactly the, taken from the Latin alphabet. Each letter with a fixed integer value, modern style, modern style uses only th these seven. So there is only these seven, although in the past there were other um, characters that were used in these numbers. Now they have been, now they are essentially considered as deprecated. They are not in use anymore. Now, the use of Roman numerals continued long after the decline of the Roman Empire. From the 14th century, and Roman numerals began to be replaced by Arabic no Roman numerals. That's what, what we talked about in the previous video. The Arabic numerals being essentially, uh, the Arabic numerals essentially being a 1, a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, all the way up to 9. And then you have essentially um, a 0, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the way up to 9 that is used in, of course, a 9 in, in, in this would be, for example, something like this. So, this is used, for example, in Persian, in Urdu, in those kinds of languages, languages that are um, used essentially in some parts of Asia, essentially. Um, then there is essentially then and then the arabic numerals are are this is of course used in the arabic language as well this set and then there is the family that has descended from the brahmic family the, the brahmic essentially numerals those are essentially used in india that's essentially the meaning of uh, arabic numerals However, this process was gradual and the use of Roman numerals persists in some applications to this day. One place they are often used, they are often seen is on clock faces. For instance, on the clock of Big Ben design, uh, designed in 1852, the hours from 1 to 12 are written as 1 to 12, right? So still there are some clocks on the face of which you would see essentially these numerals over here. So, and then the notations, for example, one, 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 five, that would be essentially one less than five, meaning five minus one, which is a four, or for example, the one and ten would be, for example, ten minus one, or one, one less than ten, which is a nine. Although there is a tradition favoring representation of four as four ones, basically, on Roman numeral clocks, but then this is just about, this might be just, just about the clock and nobody does this kind of thing anymore as far as I have read in some articles essentially on the internet. Meaning it's not the norm to do this type of thing anymore. Meaning essentially at the most you can put three of these of the same characters in succession. The fourth one is not allowed anymore. Other common uses include year numbers and or on monuments and buildings and copyright dates on the title screens of uh, movies and television programs 
So for example, MCM, MCM essentially what that means, an M is a thousand. And then uh, essentially a CM, C is a hundred. So when, when essentially when a character standing for something smaller comes before something that is larger, meaning that for example, this C is a hundred, this M is a thousand. So the C is smaller than the M, right? This means that, meaning that the C is on the left hand side of M. That means the value of C has to be subtracted from the value of M. So then a thousand minus a hundred would be, would be essentially 900. And this is a thousand. So thousand plus 900 would be 1900 or 1900 signifying a thousand and a hundred less than another thousand means 1900 so then 1912 for example you would have to write a 1900 which is exactly mcm and then a 12 so then the whole thing has to be added together for the years of the current 21st century mm indicates for example mm would be two thousands thousand plus thousand that would be two thousand and so the current year would be, for example, 2024, which is essentially MM, which is a 2000. And then you have to add a 24 to that, which is then again, two tens. That would be 20 and a four, meaning a one less than a five is a four. So then MMXXIV would be a 2024, for example. So the number system is a little bit... Uh, um, is a little bit um oh uh, well that's just the way that it works really so i don't have any names for it but but then that's that's the way that it works okay now about um about description so that that tells you essentially about the roman numerals use different symbols for each power of 10 and there is no of course that what's important here in the number, no, Roman numerals is that there is no zero in this system. Um, there is actually a zero, which is called, which is, which is, which has a specific name for itself. But that zero is not used as a placeholder. For example, in the case of uh, position systems, when you want to write essentially 120,000. Then these four zeros are used as placeholders. And of course, this is the decimal system, which means that the system is a position system. So because you have to fill these positions um, and as a result of which the 12 is sent back to the to the very beginning of the number, then of course, there's, there is place filling essentially place filling zero zeros essentially that are used in the number system but the rome but but essentially in the roman system there is no such zeros for filling the filling essentially the different positions there is a zero that is used in some ways but i'm, I'm not really sure how that actually works but the system itself to begin with is not a position system so you don't have to i mean there is no position really to fill in the first place right <clears throat> and um, so and so it is in this system essentially you add these different num these different numbers you add or subtract to essentially make the different numbers that you want to make as a result of which the Roman numerals use different symbols for each power of 10 and there is no zero symbol. In contrast with the place value notation of Arabic numerals in which place keeping zeros enable the same digit to represent different powers of 10. Meaning that, for example, if I, in the case of, for example, in the case of a notation, in the case of a position system, I can put a one over here. I can put a one in over here. I can put a one over here. I can put a one over here. I can put a one over here. Right? And in each case, essentially, the one is going to have a specific different meaning. In this case, the one is just the one. It's just, 
In this case, the one means a ten. In this case, the one means a hundred. In this case, it means a thousand. In this case, the one means a ten thousand, right? But, and in all of these cases, I'm using the exact same digit one and to mean completely different values. But then in the Roman system, then you cannot keep using the same. You have to use all different kinds of things to write, for example, either a one or a ten or a hundred and so on and so forth. Now, the, this paragraph over here, essentially the gist of it is that this, there is no, there has never been an official or universally accepted standard for Roman numerals, meaning that the system has always been changing over time. And this is possible in the case of this system because there is no really, I mean, when it comes, for example, to the decimal number system, you cannot just change something as you wish. Because if you change something, then the whole system will fall apart. Anything that you change in the system, the whole system will fall apart. Everything has been set down essentially scientifically. There is no way to change anything. Otherwise, the whole system changes. Or essentially, the system will not even work anymore. But in this system, it's more, more of a convention. More of different conventions put together along with some essentially alphabets borrowed from the latin essentially from the latin alphabet for example then somebody has said that we will put four four of these 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 ones together that becomes a four then later on somebody has said no we are not going to do that anymore we're going to to put only up to three of them and the, and then for writing a four then we are going to do something else and then the same thing has happened over and over again, meaning that the system has been changing over time. Now it is, now it is, it is desirable to strictly follow the usual start style described below, meaning that today, if you're using the, the Roman system, it is uh, so that everybody else, so that you're on the same page with every, everybody else, everybody else can understand you. It's better to, of course, follow this, this, this exact system over here. So you have, <clears throat> you have the units. So you have the tens, hundreds, and thousands. And then there is one, two, three, all the way up to nine over here. And you see that there is no zero here, right? So units means one times, essentially that's a one, that's a, that's essentially a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, eight, and nine. And then for the, essentially that's a 10, that's a two times 10 would be a 20, three times 10 would be a 30, four times 10 is equal to 40, 50, and then that's a 60 because um, it's a, um, it's essentially a, um, it's essentially a uh, L and X. So the L is a 50 and X is a 10, of course. So then that becomes a 60. And then you have, uh, and then you have, for example, the 70 here, which is L, X, X. So L is 50 and two tens would be essentially a 70. Then this is, and this would be an 80. And this would be a 90, meaning that essentially a C is a 100, 100 minus 10, the X comes before the C, the X is a 10, that the, the C is a 100, so that's 100 minus 10, which is a 90. Then, then there is a 100, which is just a C, then this would be 200, 300, and then more than three of them you cannot use successively, so then you have to, for 40, you have to do a, a, uh, excuse me, this is of course 100, this is 200, 300, so this would be a, it's essentially a 400. A 400, you have to take a 500 and, and, and subtract 100, so that would be a, 500, a 400. A 500 would be just a 500. A 600 would be a 500 plus a uh, 100. A 700, 500, 100, 100, 700. That is 500, 100, 100, 100, that would be 800. 
and 900 would be essentially 1000 minus 100. So M is 1000 minus a C, which is a which is 100, that would be 900. And then there is 1000. You see, the system is actually not that bad, but then, of course, it's, I mean, there is no way that you can actually use this in scientifically, meaning that um, somewhere in this article, I remember reading that um, using this system, I mean, the largest number that you can represent following these rules would be 3,999. And then, and then any number above 3,999 3, would be considered a large number in this system. Then, then they have also basically they have used other rules in order to and then other symbols and so on and so forth in order to make numbers larger than 4000 for example 3999 basically so then you have a thousand which is an m then that's a 2000 3000 and so on and so forth so the same you see the pattern over here right <clears throat> And then there is um, so the 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 system essentially is is essentially an additive system and also a subtractive system, meaning of course as you can see you're adding things and you're subtracting things in order to essentially make these numbers. So f the numerals so for example for a four you have to subtract for a nine you have to subtract a four is a five minus one a, a nine is a ten minus one. So these are written using subtractive notation, where the smaller symbol is subtracted from the larger one, thus avoiding the clumsier this type of essentially notation. Subtractive notation is also used for 40, 90, 400, and 900. So 40, so there is only for 4, 9, and essentially 40, 90, 400, and 900, the subtractive notation is used. These are the only subtractive forms in standard use, meaning essentially any, anything, if you use the subtractive notation for anything other than these one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, then based on the current system, you're doing something wrong, right? Okay, so now when it comes to um, essentially building numbers containing two or more decimal digits, Essentially, for example, 39 has two decimal digits, or 246 has more than two, meaning three decimal digits, or this has, essentially, this number has three decimal digits, or 2,421, four decimal digits. Then, of course, you have to, well, find some way in order to build your number meaning that for example a 39 for example a 39 would be a 30 plus a 9 meaning a 3 tenths would be a 30 and then a 9 would be would be a 10 minus 1 so then it becomes xxxix for example or a 246 so a 246 would be a 200 and a 40 so that's a 50 minus 1 so the L is a 50, so that's 50 minus 10, excuse me, 50 minus 10, that's a 40 plus a 6, which is 5 plus 1. So that would be, for example, CCXLVI. Or a 789, that would be, for example, a 700, that's a 500, and a 200, essentially 100 and 100 is 200, so that's a 780. 80 would be a 50 plus a 10 and a 10 and a 10 so that would be 50 plus 30 would be 80 and this is a 9 2421 2000 would be mm meaning 1000 plus 1000 400 would be 100 less than 500 meaning 500 minus minus 100 essentially and then a 20 would be a 20 would be two tens and a one would be just a one. So then, then the number becomes MMCDXXI, something like that. 
and then um, any missing place represented by zero in the place value equivalent is omitted as in Latin speech. So for example, suppose that your number has a 160, is, a, is 160, so that's 100, a C is 100, and a 60 would be a, 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 a L which is a 50 plus a 10 that is 160, right? That means that essentially this zero, which is essentially a placeholder in the decimal number, of course, you don't have to worry about it as long as you have essentially represented the value of the number in Roman numerals. So that the placeholder zero is not, is not, is not a problem. I Meaning you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so a 207 for example would be a 200 plus a 7 so the 0 is not important meaning that it's uh, you can think of the number as a as for example one digit and for example a second digit whereas this number in decimal has three digits but then essentially this 0 over here is just a placeholder for the in the decimal system and uh, since we have already done the 200 over here then the, that zero is not of course important or 1009 so you have 1000 already so these two zeros are not important and then nine would be for example a 10 minus one and so on and so forth right and as you can see here basically you can see that the largest number that can be represented in this manner is 3999 which would be essentially this number over here. But this is sufficient for the values for which the Roman numerals are commonly used today, such as year numbers, meaning that uh, this system is, of course, not used, for example, like the... Uh, essentially, it's not used for, I don't know, some large number, for example, in physics or a very some very small number in physics or something like that. The system is normally not used for that sort of purpose, so that's okay. <clears throat> and so these are, again, some examples, for example, 1776 and so on and so forth. And then prior to the introduction of our Arabic numeral, numerals in the West, ancient and medieval users of Roman numerals used various means to write larger numbers. And so, essentially, <coughs> and so essentially, um, the the larger numbers we we will see about essentially how we how we can do that. And then there is other forms forms exist that vary in one way or another from the general standard rep represented above, which is not important in our discussion right now. So we can essentially forget about these. And then there is other subtractive forms, that is also some forms other than the, the standard form. <coughs> and then there is the there is also the non-standard variance, which is again not, not important in this discussion. And then there is there is the zero, which is which is interesting in in this discussion, which is essentially as a non-position number system. So, of course, the Roman system is a non-positional number system. Roman numerals have no placekeeping zeros, right? So, the, the placekeeping zero has not, it doesn't have any sort of application. Furthermore, the system as used by the Romans lacked a, num a numeral for the number zero itself. It seems that, I mean, the number zero, it seems that, the longest, I mean, it might have been, uh, I mean, the first time that zero was actually discovered and used, essentially, was around, I mean, at most around 1600 years ago. Although I'm not really sure about this date, but it must have been around 1600 years ago. Uh, although it has been there in different formats, even before the birth of Jesus Christ, I could say. But then that zero that existed, for example, around 2300 years ago, it didn't have any sort of mathematical importance. It was used for different types of purposes, not exactly, not, not, not used in mathematics, essentially. I suppose that's what I have 
what I have learned from essentially from some articles essentially on Wikipedia at any rate uh, essentially this system because it's not a position system you don't have a essentially place keeping zero in the system so now the, the place keeping zero doesn't exist so the word nulla meaning the latin word meaning none uh, essentially and 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 and, and there is also the, the 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 word null which must come essentially from the same root was used to represent zero although the earliest attested instances are medieval for in, for instance uh, whatever that is used nulla alongside roman numerals in a manuscript from 525 ad about so that 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 must have been essentially we know that the 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 word nulla was was actually used at this at this point in time 525 meaning around 1500 years ago in some manuscripts about 725 meaning about 200 about 200 years later Beide Be or whoever that is I don't know or one of his colleagues used the letter N the initial of nulla or of nihil the Latin word for nothing for zero in a table of epacts whatever that is all written in no in roman numerals so the use of n to indicate none long survived in the in the historic apothecary system of measurement used well into the 20th century to designate quantities in pharmaceutical prescriptions now the rest basically it it is of course um it is interesting that that Romans had their own fractions because without fractions you couldn't have your coins you couldn't have you couldn't do anything of course so the, the, the essentially fractions you have to have them and they had actually made some some sorts of some sorts of fractions with their own names essentially and their own designations and and notation for example it, it, there is the, the, there is one dot two dots three dots and so on and so forth something like that and there is an s there is an there is something called an i which is the unit and so on and so forth but these are of course not related to our discussion right now so we are not going to do anything meaningful with these fractions although if you go through them some words you some words you would you would you would use you would find interesting for example uncia if that's correct pronunciation that's essentially the that's most probably where the word ounce the today's ounce comes from or sextens is 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 essentially again uh, that's the words that they used or essentially quadrants that's that's quarter triens or triens that is the thirds for example for example, quincunx, that's one, one, five ounce, for example. Or now do you see essentially interesting things over here. If you're interested, you can go and take a look and you see they have their own, um, essentially, um, notation here for essentially one over 1728 or one over 288 or one over 144 and so on and so forth and then for large numbers essentially as you can see they have done all kinds of different things for example the same notation for example the c they used it the other way around and then a little bit differently and then they were mirroring things and for example you see there is three of c's over here there is a one over here and then three of those earlier c's over here you they kind of essentially mirror these in different ways to mean for example different things for example this would be a hundred thousand and of course these large numbers have no application for for us today meaning in mathematics or anything that you do so you're not going to use these anymore and these are and this is then the that's all about that and then uh, that's essentially all that we can discuss here so that's all about the that's all about the roman uh, 
that's all about the Roman numeral system in the next video we will talk a little bit about we will essentially use these in a couple of examples and exercises to uh, work a little with them so that later on we can use them in different places thank you